So here's just a concept I want you guys to think about. Anyone can tap anyone at any time. And I'm here to tell you that that's possible. I've been tapped by my white belts. I've been tapped by my daughter. I've been taught, tapped by teenagers. I've been tapped by everybody. You know, like I might take someone lightly. They catch me in a heel hook and they make me tap them and get broken. I might legitimately just get caught. But the one thing that rarely happens is that I get out grappled, that I get controlled, you know? And so like everyone can tap everyone or anyone can tap anyone but not everyone can control anyone. So I would say that we need to focus on control. Control is safer. Like if I'm trying to gun somebody down five times in a five minute round, like I'm just going bang, 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 trying to get taps, they in turn are gonna turn around and try to do the same thing to me and we're gonna open ourselves up to more injury and damage, which is gonna hurt us over time. So we need to learn how to balance between submissions and control. We need to focus a little bit more on control at this point because I think the pendulum swung all the way around where people are now just trying to get as many taps as they can in a five minute round. And I think that as your athleticism starts to decline, that strategy is not gonna be the best strategy over time. So I'm literally talking to the older grapplers right now, like myself, 45 years old. Control has become very important to me because if I don't have control over my opponent, they're throwing submissions at me and I'm fighting out of submissions, which leaves me open to injury. And uh, if I can control them, get into the mount, get their back, hunker in on side mount, I'm cutting their offense off a ton, you know? So it's keeping me safe in these five minute rounds with really young athletic guys. So for the older crowd, I would say that we gotta focus on controlling the situation to avoid because we, we know that stress, inflammation, and dehydration are the three killers of all humans. And right now, I am perfect example of dehydration. No matter how much I drink, no matter how well I take care of myself, my ligaments and tendons, they don't sprain anymore. Like when you're a kid, you're playing basketball, you jump up and you try to grab a rebound and your, your foot comes down on someone's foot and it rolls your ankle and it makes like a sound and it gets black and blue. And then in three weeks, two weeks, you're better. You're just like nothing ever happened. As you get older, your ligaments and tendons start to dehydrate. So if I went out and played basketball right now and I got a rebound and landed on someone's foot, and my ankle did that, it would tear something. It'd probably require surgery. That's just what happens as you get older. So if I'm fighting myself out of heel hooks, instead of like, oh man, I tweaked my knee, it's like a real injury now. So I've learned over the last five years that the more controlling I do in a grappling round, I don't get injured. But when I start getting into shootouts with like Andy Varela and we're playing leg locks and shit like that, I find myself getting banged up and injured, you know? So for the older people, I would say we gotta focus on controls. And probably, probably the three best controls would be like side mount, mount, and back. So those are three positions that can really help you with longevity in your jujitsu because remember this is a lifestyle this is something that we've committed to by the time that you're a black belt this is just something you're going to do until the very end so the name of the game is to stay in the game and stay competitive and stay relevant as long as possible you know well into your 70s you should be training at a pretty high level for the young athletic guys the ones that are doing flying guard passes i mean you know, Derek Rayfield is a perfect example. He's a savage wrestler, really athletic. Andy Varela is another guy that comes to mind. They do like a lot of flying triangles and diving and, you know, really athletic. Like, that's great. I'm never going to tell you guys to not do that. But what I would tell you is when you clearly can outclass somebody in, in a round, like maybe in the gym, right, where you're rolling with somebody, you should really focus on controlling. You shouldn't take the 15 taps that you know you can get. You should say like, hey, I wanna get really good at just controlling this guy. Like, he outweighs me by 30 pounds, but I've got 10 years of experience on him. I'm gonna hunker in and make him work and really focus on the controls because at the end of the day too, this is a self-defense art. And you know, there are some legalities with submitting people. Like if, if you're out in the street and I choke somebody unconscious, you know, that's considered like an assault. You know, you're not, you really strangle holds and stuff like that are viewed pretty bad in the public opinion and in the court. So 
getting into the mount and telling some guy to just calm down until the cops come and arrest him or until someone can come and break it up and you can you can exit without conflict you know that's a it's a really powerful thing so i'm going to leave you guys with this anyone can submit anyone at any given time of course i'm the example a lot of people have tapped me not everyone can control anyone so if you think about that just in those terms you want to be the guy that can control anyone at any given time i think that's the cleanest purest way form of grappling so that's the goal let's get to the point where if you can control somebody you can definitely submit them if you could submit somebody doesn't mean you can control them so let's get to the point where we can control anyone and then choose whether or not to submit them rather than just catching a lucky submission on an unsuspecting person. Like that's really not gonna help you become the better grappler. And the name of the game is to stay training until you're 90, until you're dead. The way I wanna die is I wanna walk into the gym and just fall and just be dead. That's how I wanna go out. I don't wanna go out being a 50 year old all banged up who can't train anymore. I wanna, you know, I wanna do this until literally the wheels fall off. So contingency planning. If you're young and athletic, start to plan what you're gonna look like a little bit later when you're not young and athletic. And if you're already later like me, we gotta really just start focusing on controls and making sure that these young guns aren't just snapping things on us and breaking us. Uh, I hope you guys like this video. If you guys do like these videos, please make sure you comment, subscribe, and I'm also looking to answer, you know, my buddies and everybody watching uh, questions. So if you have any, please leave some questions down below. Remember, live every day like a black belt. Peace.